this code. <laughs> Some of my worst code I've ever written. Hey everyone, my name is Max, and today I'll be jumping feet first into the world of generative art. And what is generative art? Pretty much it's using code to create art for you. Usually you use like an algorithm or just, you know, like a program. It usually relies on some sort of random noise or random variable to create a slightly different variation of the artwork every time you run it. That we can run it a bunch, kind of curate it, find your favorite example. So it kind of gives a part of it's the machine touch, you know, kind of randomly creating the artwork. The other part is like your own eye, like you as the artist has to curate your favorite artwork that the machine created. So people like me who can't draw for shit, <laughs> Uh, it's pretty great. I also really highly recommend checking out the generative subreddit on Reddit. There's a lot of really cool art on there and it just gives you a lot of really cool inspiration. So what am I going to be creating today? Um, I kind of have two ideas that I'm going to morph into like my main final idea, assuming it works. So let's sketch it out on some pen and paper. My first idea is circle packing. This is pretty common in the generative community, and pretty much it means you take a bunch of circles and you pack them together. To make this interesting, I want to incorporate random sizes and random colors to it, and I'll probably pick out some color palette somewhere. My second idea is average coloring. So for here, I'll have a grid of points, and each one will take on the average color of the points around it. I'll also have a couple source points, and those will be assigned a color that changes and kind of rotates over time. And the main idea is a combination of the two. So I'll have packed circles, and then each circle takes on the average color of the k closest points to it. So that'll involve using a k nearest neighbors algorithm, and it'll do the whole thing in P5JS. To start, I'm going to be using P5JS, like I said, and I'm going to be just kind of developing it from using my website. I'm gonna start with the circle packing one because I think that's a little bit easier. But let's get started. Quick update. Got the basic circle packing to work. Um, it's all the same color right now. Let me just... Cool. Alright, so I did some colors. So you can kind of see what's happening. Slowly some more ones are being popped up. You optimize this a bit, it runs kind of slow, and I don't really love how much space there is between them, so I might do something different, but good start. I have the circle packing done. Here's how it looks. Focus this. Have it down here. And I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm using the co color palette from uh, Childish Gambino's Stone Mountain. This bad boy. Focuses. And yeah, so next up I'm going to do the um, average color thing. And then I'm going to try and combine the two. So it'll be like circle packing and then also if like the color is changing throughout it. So we'll see how that turns out. I've been working on the second one, color of average and I have a breakthrough. It looks pretty sweet, if I do say so myself. The code is a mess. Like, this code. <laughs> Some of my worst code I've ever written. Um, pretty much I was trying to figure out how to take the average of an angle. Um, let me, let me sketch this out real quick. Normally when you take the average, you have non-repetitive numbers. So you might have like negative infinity to infinity. So you take the average, you know, it's fine when you just like add them all up and divide. Like that gives you like what you would expect. The issue is I'm using pretty much like a color wheel. So you got red represents like zero to, and like 360 degrees, which are like the same. And it goes like yellow, kind of missing all the like the greens. And you got blue, and it kind of turns into like a purple kind of color. So for us, we have zero equals 360. You know, both of those represent the color red. But if you take the average of those, you get zero plus 360 divided by two, which is 180. That means that we're saying that the average of red and red is a bluish green kind of teal color. That's bad. That causes issues. Pretty much what you have to do is you have to convert the angle to the x and y components using sine and cosine. 
add them all up, then use r tan 2 y comma x to find the new average. But it wasn't working for me, so I had to implement my own <laughs> using math, and then I realized that I had two big issues. The first is that p5.js, its sine and cosine functions, were expecting negative 180 to 180, but I was using 0 to 360 for, to represent it. And second, arctan2 returns negative 180 to 180, so I had to actually add 180 back to it to get my 0 to 360. That is the reason why <laughs> I just spent two hours trying to figure out how to average color values or like average angles, but now I know how to do that. Never thought that that would be a big issue. Um, thankfully, people have already figured it out, so I don't have to like reinvent the wheel. Now, I just need to, so every time I click, it randomizes it. I just need to combine the two ideas and then I'll be done. Quick update. This is how it looks. And then the colors kind of start changing. So pretty much what's happening is in the beginning, it's just trying to pack the circles and get enough. And then once it hits a certain number, so here, then it does the k nearest now k nearest out k nearest neighbors algorithm on each circle to find the k closest um, points to use as the average. And then after that, every time it like adds a new circle, like one of the small spaces, it calculates the closest neighbors for that point as well. So technically it doesn't update it for the points around it, but for this instance, I think it's fine. Um, it was like enough optimizing where like now it runs smoothly without having to run the whole algorithm, every single um, pixel drawing iteration. So I think it looks pretty cool. Um, the code is kind of a mess. So I'm gonna spend the rest of the night kind of just fixing it up, adding some comments. And yeah, that should be it for this. Since I started this video, I came back home for winter break, and I also got two um, studio lights. So I have a new setup. Um, I think it looks a lot better, but you know, if it looks bad, <laughs> please let me know. Anyways, I think I completed my dive into generative art. I was able to create three, I think, pretty cool um, visualizations. Um, kind of had my idea, and I think I implemented it pretty well. I'm not super happy with how the final result looks. Um, so to recap, I guess first I made this circle packing, looks like this, pretty cool. Then I made this um, sort of like color averaging, which was very difficult to do, um, trying to figure out how to average 360 degree numbers, but it worked out. And I think this is my favorite of the three. And then the third final um, generative art was combining the two ideas into one. So it's pretty much, as you can see on the screen, um, some circles packed together. And then once a certain number of them appear on the screen, they'll start averaging the colors from the sources, like from like the K nearest neighbors around it. So it worked out. Um, I'll just kind of give you guys an insight too into my creative process um, from like the ideation phase to actually troubleshooting it and working through the problems I had along the way. And then even the end, like I said, at one point I was really not liking it. And then I was able to, instead of doing like the solid colors for the final, um, generative art, the outline instead, and I think that made it look a lot better. So kind of shows even if you don't like something right away, you can play around with it and find something you like. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. I have a couple of really cool ideas coming up, so please subscribe and I'll catch you guys later.